Hi, I'm Fernand the Cardboard Stacker and welcome to the quick start tutorial to Heir to the Throne from Amber Palace Games, a card game about royal family trees. This game plays from 2 to 4 players ages 11 and up and plays around 45 to 60 minutes. In Heir to the Throne, each player controls a noble house in which they were produced children, find a spouse from rival houses and hopefully to secure their family with an heir to the king's throne. To set up a game, shuffle all three decks. Each player will draw a noble house card to represent what house they are playing. The unused noble houses are returned to the box. Then each player draws two character cards and places them face down below their noble house card. Players will have to be careful not to look at these cards until it's flipped face up. Finally, all players draw five cards and the game is ready to begin. On a turn, before players begin taking their actions, they turn up any child to become adults. These are character cards that are face down that are flipped face up. Whenever a couple produce a child, they come face down and are not eligible yet to be married. On each and every turn, beginning with a random player, they must select two actions. The actions that can be executed are, declare a mulligan, discard one card, and play a court drama card. Players can select each of the actions twice except for declaring a mulligan which can only be done once a turn and only on a player's first action. To do a mulligan, the player simply discards all cards from their hand and draws to four cards. A player can discard a card by taking a card in hand and putting it into the discard pile. However, a player can only draw new cards at the end of the turn. This action is a good way to cycle through cards. The heart of the game takes place with court drama cards. Each card has two different effects and can benefit a player's noble house and lineage, or hinder other players. After taking both actions, a player draws back up to 5 cards and the turn passes to the next player. The game can only be won when a house has a great grandson, however there are some strict qualifications in order for this to happen. They must be a 4th generation character, male, of age, child of the house, and he may not have an illegitimate or infertile token. Once a house has a qualifying male heir on their turn, their house places an heir token and must wait until the beginning of their next turn to win. There are many ways an heir can be disqualified. If he receives an illegitimate or infertile token, is removed from the family, is no longer a great grandchild, or is no longer a child of the house. If any of these happen to the character, then the house removes the heir token. The same character may earn the heir token multiple times as long as he qualifies. If a house manages to wait one full turn without the token being removed, they win the game. At a quick glance, each court drama card has two separate parts. When using one, a player decides to use either the top part of the card or the bottom half. The court drama cards come in four different types, Union, Birth, Attack, and restoration. Unions are when unmarried characters are joined. As long as the characters are of age, a character that is face up, not currently siblings, and not a parent or child of the other, they are eligible. A character from any house is paired with a character from another player. Place the character card so that all traits can be seen and a player's own child of the house must be placed on top of their spouse. From now on, the joining character lose all ties from their former family and is no longer considered a sibling, child, or parent. The two types of marriages that can happen are marriage, marrying one unmarried son, or matrilineal, marrying one unmarried daughter. If the character moving into a new house has an illegitimate token, it is removed when they come under the new house. Births are the only way to produce an heir in this game. Both couples and unmarried characters can have children, and cards can only affect the player's own house. There are different birth type of effects. Takes after mother or takes after father effects will have their next child to take one of the traits of one of their parents. When a player plays this card, they look at the trait of the top card of the character deck. If one of those traits take on at least one of the traits of the selected parent, that card is placed below the couple face down. The card is now referred to as Child of the House. If it is not, then it is discarded to reveal the next card, 
seeing if the new one on top matches any of the traits. This process repeats until the card qualifies. Shuffle the discarded cards if needed. If in a rare case a card cannot be found, take the top character card from the deck. If at least one of the parents has an illegitimate token, the new card will also receive an illegitimate token. Note that some of the restrictions include that birth effects cannot be played after union effects and birth effects on the same couple, and if at least one couple has an infertile token. There are other birth effects that can be played. Scandal can have an unmarried character to have children, however that child will come as illegitimate. Scandal effects when played on married couples can be used on couples that just married or given birth on the same turn. A miracle can happen to couples with an infertile token, producing a child which doesn't have to share any traits with the parents. Spitting Image has at least an unmarried character or couple with an uncanny resemblance trait. The child doesn't gain an illegitimate token in any way even if the parent does. And as long as a couple has a pious trait, they can have twins with the Twin Court Drama card. Attacks cause hindrances to rival houses. These cards cannot be played on a player's own house which includes characters in their house and their noble house cards. These range from making characters illegitimate and infertile, disposing a character, and even forcefully taking other houses' children to bring them under their own. Restorations affects players' own houses. These are mainly to get rid of tokens and make special unions. In the case of special unions, a character that moves from a house that has an illegitimate token removes it. And with most special unions, they will need a required trait in order to take effect. For example, a choice of suitors can only be played on a married character that has a rich trait. They remove their spouse, then immediately marry them. Here are some special rules to follow. Sometimes a whole generation may get discarded, leaving an empty row. As long as there is another row of descendants, they are moved into the empty row, rearranging the generational lines. When a married child of the house is discarded, their spouse becomes the new child of the house. While victories can be reached just with the fourth generation character, it is possible to go and curate a fifth generation male heir and beyond. They will still be eligible to win the game. And if a house only has one child left, it is safe so it cannot be discarded or moved to another house. Also, this symbol on the character will be used in future expansions. This concludes the quick start tutorial to Heir to the Throne. For more information about this game, please visit the link in the description below. I also like to thank Amber Palace Games for sponsoring this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Come check out our other board game reviews and tutorials on our YouTube channel, The Carbert Stacker, and please visit our website. This is Ferdinand, and remember to keep on stacking games.